Have you ever pondered how a decision made by a handful of individuals can drastically shift the trajectory of a prisoner's life? It's a question that weighs heavily on the minds of those entrenched in the world of criminal justice. This is the story of parole boards, the gatekeepers of freedom. Parole boards operate in the shadows, yet their influence is profound. They are the arbiters of freedom, the ones who decide whether a prisoner, having paid their debt to society, is ready to rejoin it. But who are these people who hold such immense power? They are a diverse group, often comprising former law enforcement officers, lawyers, public members, and sometimes even former offenders. Their backgrounds are varied, but they all share a singular responsibility to determine if a prisoner is prepared to live freely without posing a threat to society. The decision-making process is far from simple. It's a complex and nuanced analysis that takes into consideration a plethora of factors. These include the nature and severity of the original offense, the prisoner's behavior while incarcerated, their rehabilitation efforts, and the potential risk they pose to society upon release. They also consider a prisoner's remorse and willingness to change, often a subjective and challenging judgment to make. Parole boards also shoulder the burden of public safety. A wrong decision could mean releasing a potentially dangerous individual back into society. Conversely, a decision to deny parole could rob a reformed individual of their chance at redemption. It's a delicate balancing act, one that is fraught with tension and uncertainty at every turn. The power of a parole board's decision is far-reaching, impacting not only the individual prisoner, but also their families, victims, and the community at large. Their decisions can incite public outcry, ignite debates around justice and fairness, and even influence policy changes. So, the role of parole boards is indeed crucial, but what happens when they make controversial decisions? That's a question we'll explore as we delve deeper into the world of parole boards and their impact on prisoner release. Stay tuned as we navigate these murky waters together. Let's delve into the case of John Doe, a prisoner who seemed to tick all the boxes for parole, yet was denied. John, a model prisoner, had completed rehabilitation programs, maintained a clean disciplinary record, and even secured a job offer for post-release. A perfect candidate for parole, one might think. But the board thought otherwise. You see, the board's decision isn't solely based on a prisoner's behavior or accomplishments within the prison walls. Other factors come into play. In John's case, it was his lack of a strong support system outside prison that raised a red flag. The board feared he might struggle to adjust to life on the outside, which could potentially lead him back to crime. Additionally, the board considered the nature of John's crime and his remorse or lack thereof for his actions. Although he had served his time, the board didn't feel he truly understood the gravity of his actions. John's case illustrates that parole board decisions can be unpredictable, even when a prisoner has seemingly met all requirements. Now consider the case of Jane Doe, a prisoner with a less than stellar record, yet was granted parole. Jane's rap sheet was long and filled with infractions, but the parole board decided to look beyond this. They took into account her recent efforts towards rehabilitation, including her involvement in educational programs, her consistent good behavior over the past year, and her expressed remorse for her actions. This decision stirred controversy, of course. Critics argued that Jane's past should have disqualified her from parole eligibility. However, the board saw something in Jane that indicated a potential for change. They recognized that people can evolve, can learn from their mistakes and can strive to better themselves even within prison walls. Parole boards often have to navigate these murky waters, weighing a prisoner's past against their potential for a brighter future. Jane's case shows that parole boards can sometimes see beyond a prisoner's past, focusing more on their potential for rehabilitation. Let's turn our attention to the case of Richard Rowe, a repeat offender who was granted parole multiple times. The tale of Richard Rowe is an intriguing one. Despite having a robust history of reoffending, he was repeatedly granted parole. Each time the parole board believed that he showed signs of improvement and remorse, and that he was ready to reintegrate into society. But time and time again, Richard proved them wrong, returning to his old ways shortly after his release. 
His case forces us to question the parole board's ability to accurately assess a prisoner's potential for rehabilitation. Are they too lenient, too hopeful, or simply ill-equipped to predict the future behavior of hardened criminals? Furthermore, Richard's case highlights the necessity for more effective post-release programs and stricter parole conditions. It calls for a reassessment of the parole system's fundamental principles and its overall effectiveness. Richard's case raises questions about the efficacy of parole boards in predicting a prisoner's likelihood to reoffend. Parole board decisions can have far-reaching impacts, not just on the prisoners, but also on the society at large. Let's explore. Parole boards, in essence, hold the key to a prisoner's freedom. The decisions they make reverberate through our social fabric, influencing public safety, recidivism rates, and prison overcrowding. Public safety is a paramount concern when granting parole. The board must weigh the potential threat a prisoner might pose if released. Are they likely to commit another crime? Have they shown genuine remorse and a willingness to change? These are critical considerations. A misjudgment can result in dire consequences, potentially endangering innocent lives. On the other hand, parole can also play a significant role in reducing recidivism rates. By providing prisoners with a second chance, we foster an environment of rehabilitation and reintegration. This approach often proves more effective than punitive measures alone. However, there's a delicate balance to be struck. Parole shouldn't be seen as an easy way out, but rather as a reward for genuine transformation and growth. The impact of parole board decisions extends to the issue of prison overcrowding as well. Our prisons are bursting at the seams, a situation that's far from ideal in terms of both human rights and financial costs. Parole can be a tool to manage this issue, but it's not a panacea. It's essential to ensure that the desire to reduce overcrowding doesn't overshadow the need to protect society and rehabilitate offenders. It's a complex dance, a delicate balancing act. The decisions made by parole boards are not taken lightly and their impact is felt far and wide. These decisions shape lives, mold societies and influence our collective perception of justice. As we dive deeper into this topic, it becomes increasingly clear that these decisions are not just about the individual standing before the board. They're about all of us, our values, our safety, and our capacity for forgiveness and redemption. As we've seen, the ripple effects of parole board decisions extend far beyond the prison walls. Having explored the intricacies of parole board decisions and their impacts, let's summarize the key points. Firstly, parole boards play a crucial role as the gatekeepers of freedom, they bear the responsibility of deciding whether a prisoner is ready to reintegrate into society. This task is far from simple. It requires a deep understanding of the offender's behavior, the nature of their crime, and the likelihood of them reoffending. Secondly, unexpected denials of parole can be a harsh reality for prisoners who have shown significant progress in their rehabilitation. These denials underscore the complex and sometimes unpredictable nature of parole board decisions. They serve as a reminder that the road to freedom is not always straightforward, even for those who appear to be on the right path. Next, the controversial approval of parole applications can stir public discourse and raise questions about the effectiveness of the parole system. Such decisions can sometimes appear lenient, especially in cases involving serious crimes. However, they are often made with the belief that the prisoner has reformed and is ready to become a contributing member of society. We also discuss the issue of repeat offenders, a key concern when it comes to parole decisions. The release of an individual who then re-offends is a stark reminder of the risks involved in these decisions. It highlights the importance of thorough assessments, ongoing support, and carefully planned reintegration strategies. Lastly, the impact of parole board decisions extends beyond the prisoner and affects society as a whole. These decisions can influence public perceptions of the justice system, affect community safety, and play a significant role in the larger conversation about crime and punishment. In conclusion, parole board decisions are multifaceted and carry significant weight. They require careful judgment, a deep understanding of human behavior, and a commitment to balance the needs of the individual with the safety of the community. Remember, parole board decisions are more than just a verdict. 
They are a delicate balancing act between justice, rehabilitation, and societal safety.